Before the war, part of FDR's New Deal formed the Tennessee Valley Authority. This governmental arm would begin to build lakes and dams to provide key industrial areas with hydroelectric power. One of the most important dams in this project was Fontana Dam. Opened in 1944 on the southern edge of the Great Smoky Mountains National Park was the tallest dam east of the Mississippi River, Fontana Dam. Fontana Dam was built to power the local Alcoa Aluminum Company, where vital materials would be made for the war effort. Now, a regional man-made beauty, Fontana Dam serves as a recreational getaway and the unofficial entrance to the Smoky Mountains, as the Appalachian Trail crosses over the dam. The Alcoa Aluminum Company had its eyes on the Little Tennessee River and its valley system for a potential dam location dating back to 1910. The company recognized its need for a more direct power source as industry nationwide continued to boom. Electric companies simply couldn't handle the massive amount of electricity demand a company like Alcoa put on the electrical grid, which led to Alcoa's initial search for alternative power sources. Alcoa not only needed a direct power source, but a powerful and dependable one. Alcoa Aluminum purchased land in the Little Tennessee River Valley in 1913 for future construction of a hydroelectric dam. For years, the land was left untouched until the Tennessee Valley Authority was created by the New Deal in 1935. TVA almost immediately contacted Alcoa Aluminum about a potential dam in the area. They were concerned about the effects that a dam would have on the surrounding Tennessee Valley, so they offered to lead the construction of the dam. The problem was that they didn't have the funding to do so. Then, the United States entered World War II after the attack on Pearl Harbor. This was the spark that TVA needed to secure funding. The country needed as much industry as the infrastructure could possibly handle, so a plan to not only increase Alcoa Aluminum's wartime production, but build the necessary infrastructure for it flew through the red tape barriers. After funding had been secured by TVA through the power of Congress, construction on Fontana Dam began in 1942. Fontana Dam would need about 70,000 acres of land to be constructed, of which a portion needed to be cleared of the present forest. Families, graves, and roads were relocated. The small cities of Fontana, Judson, and others were completely flooded during the building of the Fontana Dam. The amount of concrete needed for Fontana Dam was so high that many people thought it could never be built. Even if they set the concrete properly, properly, skeptics foresaw massive structural integrity issues that could bring the dam down sooner rather than later. TVA considered the actual setting of the concrete to be the most serious issue. They thought that the heat given off during the setting of the concrete would eventually create massive cracks in the dam. To counter this, TVA engineers decided to split the dam into multiple blocks and cool them with pipes and coils. Another problem ahead of the TVA engineers was the planned waterfall-like spillway. Many dams install their spillways at the top of the dam, which creates a waterfall effect when releasing water from the reservoir. Because Fontana was to be such a tall structure, engineers believed the massive downward spillway could cause erosion and destroy the foundation of the dam. This would be a fatal issue. So instead of a waterfall spillway, they created a spillway that travels around the dam into the nearby mountainside, allowing the water to come in at a flatter angle away from the foundation to avoid any such erosion. TVA finished construction in November of 1944 as they closed the gates to create Fontana Dam. The project cost $70 million in 1994 which would have equaled nearly $1 billion in today's money. A couple of months later, as World War II was starting to wind down, Fontana Dam started sending electricity to Alcoa Aluminum. Fontana Dam is formed by Fontana Lake and the Little Tennessee River. It's traversed by the Appalachian Trail. It's the tallest dam in the eastern United States. It's the tallest concrete dam east of the Rocky Mountains. It's over 2,000 feet across. It has almost 12,000 acres of reservoir area. It has three generators producing 304 megawatts of energy per day. And it has 57 feet of variation in surface elevation per year. As it turned out, fears of the engineers working on the massive concrete structure were proved true as Fontana Dam began cracking 
as early as 1949. Twenty years later in 1972, more cracks were found that expanded over the next year. The cause of the cracking was the feared release of heat from the setting concrete. But what scientists didn't know until the results of a conducted study in the 1970s happened was that a chemical reaction was making the cracks worse and expanding them even more so than the release of heat. After a successful stabilization of the problem areas, TVA has since done another restabilization of the dam's cracks and will continue to do so indefinitely. Uh, Fontana Dam brings up many positives and negatives with its construction. The success of the New Deal and other programs to raise the standards of our infrastructure while employing more workers is without a doubt one of the greater achievements of the United States. It was a success and was the direct reason for bringing many families and the country off the brink of collapse. Fontana Dam also shows the great things the U.S. can do when determined to do so. This was simply one of those times when the needs of the people and the government were aligned, which doesn't happen often. Unfortunately, Fontana Dam seems to be another victim of our government's current attitude towards important infrastructure. They don't want to spend the money or hire the workers. There will come a time when the infrastructure we have been patching like Fontana Dam will break, and it won't just be Fontana. It will be the majority of our current infrastructure as it all needs a complete redesign and rebuild. I fear for the people who will be left to rot in the wake of these future disasters.